day announces he's retiring and rides off into the sunset with potentially an NCAA tournament win. Duquesne gets BYU in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Matt McCall, do they have a chance? Can they win this thing? Can Duquesne get it done? Oof, conflicting styles, conflicting styles. And I'm an I'm an A10 homer. I'm 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 pulling for the A10. <laughs> Keith Dambrot. Uh, first of all, let's let's talk about him and uh, his journey, his career. Uh, good for him to finally get him to the NCAA tournament. I mean, my last year in the league, I think they won two games. And his athletic director gave him time. Uh, he built it the right way. Jimmy Clark, Dede Grant. Um, and this team started the year off in league play 0-5. And, and they won their last 11. So to see Coach Dan Brod, his wife has battled health issues. He said it in his press conference the other day. He had told me that back at A10 Media Day when the three of us were together uh, back in Brooklyn in October. Um, so he wants to go spend time with her. He wants to go spend time with his family. So good for him. And I texted him the other day, take a bow, coach. I think I put it on Twitter as well because uh, he's he, he is an, an awesome human being. So to see the fact that they got themselves in the NCAA tournament, knock off Dayton, who we'll talk about here in a little bit, uh, and then beat VCU in the final, I don't love the matchup for Duquesne. I don't, I, I, you know, in terms of BYU, the shooting, um, the floor spacing, the balance that BYU has on the offensive end of the floor. Mark Pope has done an unbelievable job with that program this year. Coming into the Big 12 for the first year, um, I, I just – I don't see it. I, I think this game is going to – BYU is going to try to get this game in the high 70s, and I don't know that Duquesne can keep up offensively. But 11 straight wins, crazier things have happened in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, Duquesne has won now uh, 14 of their last 17, Jeff, and they are heading to their first NCAA tournament since – the year you graduated high school, 1977. What does that say about the job that Keith Danbrot has done there? <laughs> uh, first of all, I'm not going to tell you what I want to say after that comment, but um, I, I love Danbrot. I'm so happy for him. Again, I'm not really happy how he's going out here in a way. I'm happy he's going out with an NCAA tournament appearance. I'm not happy. Again, obviously, um, you know, his wife's dealing with some health issues. Um you know, they had a rough year a couple of years ago when he dealt with some personal problems. So I, I just, I feel for him. I feel for him. Um, but again, it is nice that he's going out this way. I will disagree with Matt McCall on the BYU matchup. And here's why. It's all or nothing for BYU. If they're making shots, you're done. I don't care if you're Kansas. I don't care if you're, I don't want to say UConn, but just about anybody, BYU can beat when they're making their threes. But when they're not, they can lose to just about anybody. So I don't mind this. I don't mind it. I think it's actually the matchup you kind of want. Like, hey, you know what? Let's roll the dice. And if they're not making their threes, they're not athletic. They're they're deceptively athletic. Some of the guys, they can they can put on the bounce a little bit, but they're not great athletes. Um, I mean, look at Rob Doster's body double, Ali Khalifa. I mean, that's your body double. That's who that is. No question. He's a little bit taller than you, but you guys have the same identical bodies. Yeah, and you guys have the same hairline. Um, the one thing I will <laughs> say, Jeff, is that uh, is that the, the thing that makes me think that there's an actual chance here for Duquesne is um, they finished the season uh, just outside the top 50 in defensive three-point field goal percentage, right? But when they made their run late, when they started getting high and they started uh, the stretch where they won 14 out of 17, it was because they started being able to be a lot more effective at running guys off the three point line. They led the a 10 in defensive three point field goal percentage uh, at 29.5%. And they got a lot better at just running people off the line and not letting them shoot threes. And, and Matt, that's the key. If you want to beat BYU, you cannot let them get into their threes. The one thing that Mark Pope does is get really creative in some of the sets that he runs to be able to scheme open those shots. If you haven't watched him much, it's uh, it's not all that different from watching like a, a team like a Creighton or a team like a UConn. They just run a lot of different stuff and a lot of different actions to try to try to create open threes. No question. And, you know, Dan Brod said it the other day when they won the A-10 tournament, he's like, we don't want to play pretty. And it's not always going to be pretty, mm -hmm. but we're going to find ways to win. And I just keep going back to the way that they started the Atlantic 10 season off when they go 0-5 and, and all of a sudden they're cutting nuts down in, in Brooklyn in the Barclays Center. Like that's awesome. that's that, that, that's a coaching job. 
to keep your team locked in and focused. And look, it wasn't easy. They didn't have an easy path to get to the finals. You know, they, they really didn't. I mean, I don't think anybody picked them to beat Dayton. Um, no. And they were able to knock them off and in a game where, you know, Dayton kind of controlled the game and Duquesne just hung around and made plays in the end. Um, and it wasn't a pretty game. So, you know, to Jeff's point, I'm with him. If BYU's not making threes, I think they have shown ways to win games outside of when they're making threes throughout the course of this year. But if they're making threes, they can beat anybody in the country. And that's that's just my point with this matchup, you know, for 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 BYU if or for for Duquesne. Like if Duquesne was 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 up against Clemson, I would probably pick Duquesne because I'm definitely picking the Lobos uh, against Clemson and Richard Pitino. But I just the three point shooting and how. What do you have BYU, against Clemson, Matt? Just taking shots at Clemson. I don't I'm know. not taking any shots at Clemson. I'm just saying if, if they were playing Clemson, I may I may pick. Duquesne, I may stick with being an A-10 homer. Um, but I just, I, you know, the floor spacing. Now, it is an early game, too, right? Isn't it an early game? Mm-hmm. Uh, hold on. Let me check the schedule real quick. I don't have it in front of me. It is. It's Thursday. Yeah, it's the second game of the NCAA tournament. So, it'll be March 21st, Thursday, 1240 p.m. on True TV, the home of Impractical Jokers, which is the most underrated television show that you can find. Um, Matt, let me ask you this. When uh when Duquesne started making this run, like, is there anything specific that they started doing differently? I know you're you're locked in on the A10, and you you call these games, you watch these games. You're in studio for NBC uh, Sports Network, USA Network. It's uh it's always fun when I'm watching you on USA Network, and then the the game ends and it's Law and Order Special Victims Unit, and I gotta try try to find a way to change it before <laughs> before my kids realize what is on TV. Um, but what what changed for Duquesne this year? Look, I think that they were they were always relying on their defense. Like their defense was always going to carry them, and it was going to be what they focused on and uh, hang their hat on. Right? Um, offensively, at times, I mean, they were really, really struggling early. Like they they were really struggling to score. You know, Day Day Grant missed some games. He had a concussion, so you got to throw that in the mix too. I mean, he, he's one of the best scorers in the Atlantic Ten. He's a guy that you can just put the ball in his hands, and he's going to be able to go create late in shot clock situations and go get a bucket. He can make threes off the catch. He can make threes off the bounce. So I think their health was a bit of an issue during that five game stretch and they just got better. They just improved. And it was, you know, one of those things, you know, with Keith Danbrot that his team just kept believing. And that's, that's the biggest key. It's like, you can't get to a tournament setting, you know, having not, you know, had a great league uh, regular season. I mean, the, the end of their regular season was really good. They found a way to win games coming down the stretch. And then there was a belief. And then once you get to that tournament setting, if you're believing and you get up against Dayton in a close game and you believe you can win, that's exactly what they did. And that's a credit to Keith Dambra. All right. Uh, Goodman, let's talk about Dayton here because Dayton in their draw – uh, they get Nevada in the first round in a game against a team that uh, is from the Mountain West, which is one of our favorite leagues. They have two really good guards in, um, in Jared Lucas and Keenan Blackshear. Uh, they have a couple of underrated bigs, and there are bracketologists out there that will tell you that Nevada is one of the teams that was underseeded in this year's tournament. Did Dayton get a bad draw with who they drew in the first round of this uh, this event? I don't know if it's bad i mean again i i think nevada is a team that um didn't beat a lot of really good teams in the non-conference they won a ton of games in the non-conference didn't have a lot of teeth to the resume and then really got it going because they had so many opportunities in the mountain west you know really five teams they had a chance to beat and you beat enough of them um that had already done a good amount in their in their non-conference you know again Look at what the league did, right? I mean, Utah State came out of the gate so strong. Colorado State, so strong. Um, it helped teams like Nevada and Boise in a way um, that maybe, you know, didn't, uh, you know, didn't have a lot of juice coming into the year. Uh, but they, again, they had opportunities. Like you said, Lucas and Blacks, you're terrific. And Hunter McIntosh has kind of been the key to this team this year. And that's my, if, if, if there's one thing I think Anthony Grant needs to worry about, it's making sure that Hunter McIntosh, who we don't know how healthy he is, um, 
that he doesn't get going. Because if he gets going, that's a game changer for Steve Alford's team. Mm-hmm. Um, Matt, we talked uh, a couple of weeks ago before the A-10 tournament about how important it is for Dayton themselves to actually get healthy. Um, is this something that, you know, obviously they lost to Duquesne in the first round, um, but uh, Javon Bennett played, right? So how are you – is this still something that is a concern for you? Where do you think they can kind of go from here? And uh, I don't know if you can develop depth at this point, but will it concern you if you're playing a, essentially a – what is it, like a six, maybe seven-man rotation once you get to the dance? Yeah, but Anthony's never been a guy that's played had – had a deep team where he's played a lot of guys. I mean, you go back to that team that was – arguably had a chance to get to the final four with Jalen Crutcher and Obi Toppin. I mean, that wasn't a deep team either. I mean, it was that starting five and one or two guys off the bench. That was it. So Anthony's always been a guy that's kind of going to play seven, Um, you know, offensively versus Duquesne. They just looked out of sync and maybe it was the week off. I don't know what it is. That's my biggest concern for this matchup against Nevada. Um, I like Dayton in the matchup. I like him to win. I, you know, Mm -hmm. Deron Holmes, you know, and dude, all of that. dude, you would like you would like Dayton if they played the Celtics tomorrow. <laughs> Can I you make my point, Dayton. please, Jeff? Can I make my point, please? Yes. Before you yes. chime in and think that yes. I'm just yes. picking my guy, Anthony Grant, who is my guy. Okay, he is my guy. Um, <laughs> preparing for Deron Holmes is different. Playing him at a point forward, how they use him on the perimeter. They looked out of sync against Duquesne. They couldn't get him the ball. They kept trying to run stuff to get him the ball down on the block. Duquesne did a great job of fronting the post and not allowing him to catch. You know, Kobe Brea, Elvis, Nate Santos, those guys need to make threes. If they can make threes, I think they could, you know, make a run here and get to the Sweet 16. I believe that. You know, you you look at the draw that they have, you know, I just – but they've got to be able to make three-point shots. Bennett being healthy, it just gives them more depth. Um, but I really think it's more on Kobe Elvis, Cheeks, Enoch Cheeks. And I'm looking at the second-round matchup with possibly against Arizona, and I know we all want to see Arizona versus Carolina, Caleb Love against his old team yeah. to get to the Final Four. We Everybody wants to see it. Tommy Lloyd has not had a tremendous amount of success in the NCAA tournament. So Dayton's a team that could push them. Um, and how oh, Anthony uses the He's calling Holmes. the upset, Goodman. He's calling the upset. I mean, I just can't believe that McCall, the former coach, would be looking past the first game for he his is. state and flyers. Like, I'm that's just so not McCall-like. Yeah. <laughs> you know? McCall, Matt, don't you remember? When Isn't this hard. an A-10 podcast we're talking about here? Like, who can make a run? Let's go. Hey, I think Matt, state flyers Matt, can make a run. Winning is hard. Winning, winning is, is hard. hard. <laughs> Winning is hard. <laughs> Where's the T-shirt? Why do we not have the T-shirt yet, Doster? Winning is hard. Not because McCall going. would be the only one to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Winning, that was, you know, there's was, was some uh, Josh Pastor may buy it. Chris. Oh, he would. Yeah, 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 Pastor okay. would. Josh Pastor's quote would be far more positive than winning is hard. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. All right, so out of the two teams from the A-10 that are in the tournament, McCall, I need you to make a prediction. Which one is more likely to make it to the second weekend? Is it Duquesne beating BYU and maybe Illinois, or is it Dayton beating Nevada and maybe Arizona? I'm going with the Flyers, and not because Anthony's my guy, because Keith Danbrough's my guy, too. I just like the matchup. I, you know, I, I think the matchup for Duquesne I don't like as much uh, as the matchup for Dayton, so I'm going to take the Flyers. Goodman? I'm going to say that Duquesne. I am. I just, listen, I've seen BYU play multiple times. I saw him practice a few weeks ago. I'm just not blown away. I think they're so reliant on the three. And, again, that's just, it's fool's gold some days. Even, even last week in the Big 12 tournament, the first game they could not miss. And they were terrific. And then the second game, they couldn't make a three, and they bowed out. So, I don't know. I, I just feel like, again, they, they could destroy Duquesne. They could win by 30. Um, I actually wish, and I don't think I have, I think I took BYU in my bracket, and I, I may I may change it up. I may change it up you and be an A-10 home. You bracket by now. You gotta, it's, it's already in. Come on. Put it in. We got Dawson's email this morning. Like, your bracket's got to be filled out. Let's go. I feel, like, I feel like I could still reserve judgment to change it up until – Virginia starts to you're take also the one of those guys that has like four brackets 
and then like you get to say like, oh, I picked the right teams, and like you no, like it's like four different. Okay. I feel like though, but why can't I change it? As I watch Virginia brick up shots tonight, I'm not allowed to change it during that game. I don't know if I'm going to watch that game. I may put on the NIT. Yeah, well, well Randolph Childress is calling a game of Ohio State against Cornell. Right. I can promise you, I will not be watching that. Um, <laughs> Matt, Matt, here's so if you if you really this is this is going to be a, a savvy content creator thing that I can teach you about right here. So there's this thing that you that people have done the last three NCAA tournaments. They bet the money line for every single underdog in the NCAA tournament, and they've won money throughout the tournament because you get enough crazy upsets that eventually it's going to uh, end up equaling more than all the losses you take for these heavy favorites that are winning, right? All you need is basically one FDU to win it, and you're basically covered for the the, the whole event, right? So I'm doing that. I'm going to do that this year. I'm going to bet every single underdog money line. And then what I'm going to do is whenever there is an upset, I'm going to screenshot it and say, I picked the upset, baby, right here. I'm the yeah. guy that picked it's all the super upsets. super convenient when you're calling games. Yeah. In Philly. It's super convenient. <laughs> New York or Philly. You know what's funny, Jeff? He does a really good Long Island accent. He's, well, he's... I, I, I'm married to a Long Islander. Mm -hmm. I, I've heard his all... wife talk. Oh my gosh! Yeah, she's got the accent. She's, she's got, got the accent. accent. Like you know right away if when you meet McCall's wife, she I'm hasn't lived in New York, York since she yeah. was like 21, and she yeah. still has the accent. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Does. It won't go away. Matt, what was her? What's her? What's her maiden name? Allison Rios. Her dad's from Peru. Her mom's straight up Long Island. All right. So I was gonna straight say, up. does she talk like this? You get this. <laughs> All right, listen, guys, this has been fun. We've made fun of Matt McCall for long enough. Uh, and we've also predicted that both Duquesne and Dayton are going to be in the Sweet 16. Uh, if this is, it's nothing if not uh, the A10 insider if we're not homers for the conference. It is what it is, man. You got to do what you got to do. Listen, and, and, and Commissioner McGlade, you know, she, she wants the A10 to be better. She wants the A10 to have multiple teams in. She wants the A10 to be better than the Mountain West. We got that first round matchup to see. We're That's wrong, right. baby. First right. round we're matchup wrong. to see. And so. I know BYU is in the Big 12, but that's in Utah. It's kind of like Mountain West Territory. Get it done. Mountain West Territory. <laughs> East Coast, baby. Show this better. Listen, this has been uh, the A10 Insider Podcast for Matt McCall, for Jeff Goodman. My name is Rob Doster, and we'll see you guys again, hopefully, next week with a Sweet 16 game to preview.